So if I get through this call without needing a bathroom break, it's going to be uh, a miracle because I've drunk an entire pot of coffee just to keep myself awake <laughs> this morning to get through that fucking football match. You know, yesterday, actually, you, yesterday you you all for 30 minutes in our previous interview. So it was kind yeah. of a record for you. Yeah. yeah, a record it was. It was a record. A record. A record. Uh, Monica, please, um, yes. please, uh, as we say in England, take the piss out of Olivier as much as possible. That's what he's there for. Okay, yeah. just to oui, bien sûr. to ridicule. Did you? Did, you, did she just say something in French? Then don't you two start speaking in French? Quoi? I'll get all par. I thought you said something. Je parle un peu de français. Oh, tu parles un petit peu français. Allez, on va parler juste en français, rien pour l'emmerder, le vieux. Fuck this. Je ne comprends pas. Yeah, oh, I know that means oh, I don't fuck. understand, so I'm good now. I'm good. I'm happy. I'm happy. Because <laughs> that's what they used to take where everyone used to go French. You know, come break You know, like. Fuck off. Click his speaking. I understand. I understand Olivier's French about as well as I understand your English, Tim. Ah, uh, <laughs> completely fucked up, aren't we? So, okay. Okay, that's a good start. I think that's a good. I like you, Monica. I like you very much. Oh, thank you. Merci. Merci. Pretend it's moi. Yeah. Uh, my favorite, my favorite joke of all time, apart from the one with the woman with the wooden eye, but I'll not mention that now. Um, <laughs> which one is that? Well, basically, it's. Do well, you now you have to tell you're not doing. <laughs> do, do you want to hear it? It's a great joke. How long is it? Well, I can I can shorten it. I can shorten it to about thirty seconds, probably. Guys, then he's got basically he loses his leg and he's got a wooden leg and he's, he's he won't go out for months and months and but eventually his friends. His friends tempt him to go out, and they go to this club, and, and uh, he's looking at this uh, this girl on the dance floor, and he's like thinking he wants to dance, but in, and he's like, oh, you know, I can't. His mates are going, go on, go and ask us to dance, and, and and one of the mates says she's actually got a um uh, uh, <laughs> she's she's actually got. I just check. <laughs> no, okay. he, he, he ain't got a wooden leg. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a, he's got a wooden eye. Sorry, he loses his eye. So back up, and she's okay, got a wooden leg. Like, stop, no, stop, no, 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 stop. We've gone this far. It would be foolish to stop now. She's got a wooden leg. Like, that's it. He's got a wooden eye. So um, he's, she's like, he's like thinking, should I ask her for a dance? Get your wooden accoutrement set. Yeah, should, should, should I ask it? And his mates go, go on, go and ask her. And he's like, I'm in an arm for ages. And this goes on and back and forth. And eventually he goes, fuck it, I'm going to ask her. So he walks up to you, taps her shoulder, he says, do you want to dance? And she says, would not I? He says, well, fuck off then, peg leg. <laughs> oh, God. M- M- Monica, you know, I will tell you a secret, you know. You know, uh, Tim would like to be a comedian. That's his secret wish, his desire. What do you think? about his abilities right now to be a comedian? Uh, <laughs> uh, I think he's great. <laughs> yeah, he's great. <laughs> mm. Anyway, good start. I'm too Thank nice. You, yeah. Oh, you're, yeah. You're too nice, actually. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are you going to kick things off? So you... No doubt we're going to edit all that out, are we? Absolutely not. Sour. Oh, Absolutely. good. <laughs> That's why it's called Raw Voices. We did one yesterday and we didn't edit anything, including me going to the bathroom and <laughs> taking the webcam oh. with me and not really. Absolutely. It's very Great. Yeah. Mm. Do you still want to do this podcast, you... Monica, by the way? <laughs> what? Do you still want to do this podcast, by the way? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Good. Good stuff. <laughs> Right. Well, you guys are you guys are lucky. I got dressed for you today, even though you can't see me. <laughs> oh, that is that, that's, that's that's very fortunate. Thank you, thank you very much. You 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 will. You're you, welcome. You're our first dressed guest. <laughs> Nobody else is. Dre- <laughs> we actually did at one point put it in the rider. You couldn't be dressed to be on the podcast, but then. <laughs> then well, I'm still uh, wearing pajama pants. So. Oh right. Okay. Well, that's good enough. So really well, after Monica, tell us. I mean, um, actually, let me. T- tell everybody how I met Monica. Not that I've met her, but it, she sent me an email. Uh, she got a, a web comedy series coming out. She sent me sent me an email uh, saying go and have a look at this or whatever. And I I get literally inundated. I, I get dozens and dozens. I, I've I've had at least four in the last ten years emails of people asking me for my help and and to go and check out stuff. But I did. I went to check it out and I saw the the trailer and it was a, a spoof on life coaching. 
something that I'd been talking about a friend of mine literally for the last three or four years although ours was a lot naughtier than uh, ours was going to be a renegade drunken cocaine fueled <laughs> life coach so not quite uh, Monica's hasn't got to that stage yet uh, and I laughed I thought, it, I thought it was funny so uh, I contacted him and said I'd love to share that with you and we'd love to have you on the podcast so um, Monica you. you're welcome tell, tell us a bit about yourself that's a very boring okay question. go on I date back to 1986, and mm. I am, I'm from St. Louis originally, and I Whoa, moved to New York City. Go Rams! Sorry. Go Rams. <laughs> what? Go Rams! I'm a massive Rams fan. I've been a Rams fan since about 1986, actually, surprisingly enough, the year after they drafted Eric Dickinson. Nobody's got any clue what I'm talking about now. Shut up, man. No, I was, just, I was just born that year. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, you didn't, it wasn't Dick- but. So it was just co- I say it's coincidental that the year I started to support the Rams, you were born. I don't think so. Theory, I think there's some <laughs> fucking conspiracy going on here. So. Are you a Rams fan? Of course I am. I've been a massive Rams. Norm- I had a Rams T-shirt on yesterday when we did the podcast. Oh, uh, today I-, I haven't got one on. I'm not- Seriously, are they in the Are they in the playoffs? Did they make it? I oh, don't be fucking stupid. We haven't made the playoffs since two thousand and one. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> I've had 20, 25 years of misery supporting the Rams and there was, th- there was a three year period between 1999 and 2001 where I thought I'm I was on bored. acid I'm because bored. they were so good yeah. <laughs> stop talking yeah the, the only thing is you're bored because you know nothing about nothing which is a double negative and doesn't make sense so it means it's a, you do know something about <laughs> carry okay, on Monica, Monica please sorry, please sorry, we're just at your where you're oh, bored yeah. please, go on well my life is endlessly fascinating so um <laughs> I went to NYU for I studied acting there and then I just kind of started I started my own theater company for years it's called the Attic Theater Company we do about two shows a year and then I I talked to Tim about my experience with Tucker Max Um, I had been cast in this really nasty show based on Tucker's book I hope they serve beer in hell are you Mm. gentlemen familiar with this absolutely (laughs) Absolutely. You are? <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. Fabulous. I read it. I, I, I have it actually in my, in my library. Oh, my God. I should have I warned haven't. him. You've not done any prep. Well, I haven't <laughs> warned you. Carry on, Monica. <laughs> <laughs> well, that says a lot about you, Olivier. Um. Yeah, I was exactly like him in my 20s. Exactly like him. No, a prick. Weren't we all? <laughs> yeah, just a <laughs> dick. <laughs> um... Yeah, so I was in the show. Uh, this director friend of mine had been in touch with Tucker, and he got the rights to adapt his book into a Broadway-bound play. And really? so we start. We yeah. <laughs> we started off um, in rehearsals for an off-off Broadway like trial run, and I was uh, cast typecast as the mildly attractive girl, which was really very flattering. <laughs> <laughs> and I, yeah, so we just did the rehearsals. We started the show out um, off Broadway, and it was completely sold out the entire run. And then, and Tucker Max came to every single show, which he promised to do, and he was actually delightful, surprisingly. Mm-hmm. Um, at the at the time, he was, I think, seeing someone very seriously, and now he has a baby, which I think is so, so weird. Um, but anyway, we, yeah, we did the show and then it shut down our closing night. We were supposed to transfer three days later to, um, a bigger off-Broadway space and like get our full contracts. And I was going to turn equity, which is the actor union and everything. And the director came backstage and told us that the entire project had been pulled and this was it. There was nothing else. We weren't getting paid and it was a total nightmare. (laughs) So that was my experience on that show, in a nutshell, of course. But, uh, how, how is it? So, so, sorry to interrupt. How yeah. is it? Is it no. the photo of Tucker Max that is, that is uh, that the show has been cancelled or what? What's? No, it no? was. Um, I guess the fault would be on the director because it was a, a funding issue. Just some of the investments that he thought were going to go through did not go through. Okay, so still, so Tucker Max is still okay. He's a good guy, man. He's still okay. He's still my hero. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, oh, good. Yes, yeah, great. Life role model. Uh, he, uh, yeah, he was fine. 
We never heard from him again, though. <laughs> so uh, he was off making babies, I guess. Yeah, that's cool. Um, but after that, I was so pissed off at theater because I've worked in theater for years. And if you're not promised any money and you don't get any money, then it's understandable. But if you're promised a certain amount of money, I quit my day job to do this show. And then we ended up not get. I got $100 instead of, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars, whatever I was supposed to get. And so I had to just quickly find a new day job. And my life was like in complete shambles. I had zero dollars in the bank. I'd gone through all of my savings to do this show. I was so pissed that I then sort of stopped doing theater for a while because it just, I just put a sour taste in my mouth, you know? And I decided to start self-producing, which is... I did a little bit of self-producing for theater for a while because that's what I knew. And then I turned to my web series. So that brings us up to date on that. Cool. Well, so in summary, born, met Tucker Max, did web series. <laughs> is that what we're going for? <laughs> it's going to be short. What? I said, so in summary, you were born, did a web, uh, met Tucker Max, and then did a web series. <laughs> So just to, just to condense That's, There is that. nothing else in between. Yeah, okay. Apart from being <laughs> born suspiciously close to when I started watching the Rams. So, uh, you're, well, you're good at summarizing things, man. You know, you have these kind of abilities. Wow. Uh, yeah, I've got, to, I've got to a degree in summarizing. I just wish it was an Olympic event. I would be there. I would be going for gold for the UK. So, uh, yeah, and well, tell us a little bit about about the series. I don't want to get to all interviewee, but Olivier took over and went all interviewee uh, on the previous podcast. So, uh, <laughs> not may really. not have been Oh yes, you did not, at the beginning. Not really. Anyway, <laughs> you were you you were ki- you were kissing his ass. You were kissing guys' ass. You were you were you, <laughs> really. You, yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. I, you can kiss my ass. I don't mind. Oh, I don't mind. Yeah. Are we are we that intimate right now? <laughs> God's sake. Let's let's go okay. to a notch. You, know. you can't you can't see what I'm doing right now, but I'm definitely mooning you. Oh fantastic. Ooh. Oh cool. Why, why, pictures. Why why this just this I've just, just got to go to the bathroom now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I don't, don't need I don't need a bath, but anyway. Um so so when when Monica sent me the um, sent me the link, I immediately posted it. I have a, a closed Google Plus community for life coaches, and there's about uh, it's not a big group. There's about 220 life coaches in there, I think. Uh, one of which isn't Olivier. Simply, you've never joined, have you? <laughs> Fuck it. It's because he's it's because he's a professional life coach. I'm, I'm, I'm the professional one, by the way. Yeah, he's the one with the certifications, and he's the one with certification for call clients. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I posted it in there, and the immediate response was, "Oh my god, oh my god!" Uh, you know, this is going to denigrate the life coaching industry, and we're all doomed, and and stuff like that. And, and that was just me. That was just what I put. <laughs> no, no, um, from other coaches, and and I was just like, um, "Why would you think? Why would you think a spoof?" And I, I, I wrote a post on it, and I said that to me, it's a, almost like a hat tip to life coaching because you know if you it shows you being noticed even if it's not necessarily for the for the best thing so so monica was it did you have an experience with a coach or did what what kicked off the idea for you um i got the idea i had done my uh right after the tucker show i was still producing a one-woman show at a theater in new york called dixon place and one of my characters the whole show was inspired by all of my many ridiculous employment experiences, and I basically just took it to the next level, and I had this sort of clueless, idiotic life coach giving out terrible advice, and the audience loved it, so I decided to make a whole series based around that character, which is now Get a Life Coach, mm. which my fiancé came up with, so she's genius, and she just walked in. Okay. But you never so, exper- but, but you never experienced any, any coaching yourself. It's something that basically you say, okay, I will I will play this character, and this is this is this is how it came to you, right? Yeah, okay. that sounds good. <laughs> did did you, did you say the theatre was called Dixon Place? Yes. Dixon. 
is it? Is this are we back to Tucker Max or something? Yeah, no. This is good. Yeah, no. X O N. Right. Okay. I just can't get away from penises, apparently. Yeah, which is kind of ironic, isn't it? Really. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, is do you want, do you want to? Is she, is she in the? Is she in the? Um, in the series, if she came up with the idea. My fiance. Yes. She is not in the series, but I forced her to hold the microphone for every episode, so she is behind the the sound for the so series. So is, is that the grip? Is she the grip or something? Yeah. Hey, hey I'm movie. Yeah. I am. I'm, I'm Hollywood, mate. I'm Hollywood. Fuck it, I am. I'm yeah, Hollywood. she's... <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that, good. <laughs> Monica, I think we can sense something here from Tim. He wants to join you in this web series, really. He wants to join you. He wants to be an actor. He wants to, to give up his, his life coaching career and be there with you. Really, this is what, what I can sense here. Yeah, you should totally come and you can play my, my life coach mentor. Yeah, and I've, ah, got, a a ma- and I've got a massive drug habit and I'm coaching you while I'm on acid. <laughs> <laughs> be, I can see it all. Now. I love yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> I do. Yeah, and like, I've got real bad anger management issues. You know, this is this my coach. I have really bad anger management. He's like throttling his clients. You fucking do it. It's like the Bob Newhart. Have you ever seen the Bob Newhart sketch of the. The psychiatrist and the woman goes in to see him and she gives him this long lost how long is it how long is it the sketch well i'd have, fin- have finished by now if you had to fucking put it in <laughs> basically and he says to her just stop it and she says yes yes he says no just stop it and it goes on for about five minutes he's saying just stop it and that's it that's your advice and it, it rem- that, that was fuck i wish i'd not gone down that path now you're not out in my stride now you french bastard bloody hell <laughs> We love yeah. each other, Monica. You can see that. But anyway, yeah. Oh, I see. So, yeah. Yes. So, so what? What was the, the first reaction? You, know, you just released your first episode. So, how was it? How was it? What was the the reception so far? It's been really good. We have about fourteen hundred views so far, and we did uh, a release party on Sunday night, hmm. and it was solid. People really liked it so far. I haven't had any other life coaches comment, so we'll. We'll see about that. Um, I did get for the release party, though. I do have a life coaching friend who coaches uh, actors specifically, mm-hmm. and she donated a big, uh, like a life coaching package to the uh, to the release party, and that went well. Life coaches, life coaches are liking it. Mm, we are. I think you know it's funny because when I when I wrote on it, I, I didn't get any comments on my blog, and, and I don't get a mask because the the you know, I've got two blogs, and that blog is just aimed at life coaches, so I don't get you know there's only like 400 subscribers, but and I, I was trying to figure out what that meant because normally I'd probably get half a dozen or so, not really that many. I'm I'm thinking like they're standing back and and watching, but I I do think with a problem with our industry with a lack of sense of humour, you, you you know. Uh, no, I, I, yeah. you can't see this, but Olivier's pulling his face up there as if to say, "That's bollocks." We lack, so we we lack sense of humor, my friend. Both of us, come on. We no, no. The, I said the industry. I said with our industry. Ah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's it's got its. You know, I think people get a little bit defensive about. You know, and I've been told before you're just a psychologist without the training, and, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, "Oh God, you my... should watch my second episode then." <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic! We're going to. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah, great. It's coming out Monday. Those are the very first words out of my mouth. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yep. But I think. Well, I mean, it's, it's not. It's just. It's just ignorant. So you know, to me, yeah, th- this will get people talking about life coaching. Hopefully, you'll get the people that will just confirm what they already think that life coaches are clueless and they won't get the the tongue in cheek element of it. And and the fact of the matter is, there are a lot of clueless life coaches out there. There's also a lot of very very good life coaches that are helping people. And uh, if you don't yeah. stop laughing, you, I don't. I, <laughs> Every time I say anything, he starts laughing. I'm not saying anything now. <laughs> oh, for God's sake, man. Yeah, I, I know, I know, but you, I just said I'm not saying anything now, as if that's going to happen. You know, it lasts yeah, exactly. about, like, three <laughs> nanoseconds <laughs> later. Ah, did I say I wasn't saying anything? Yeah. So, um, so, so, so what's, the, what's, the, what's the big picture? What would you like to see? How, how many episodes are there? There's going to be seven. Right. And the second one's coming out on Monday. Yeah, well, this, this won't be up. It's called Burrito Therapy. Actually, I saw a clip of that, and it was very funny. 
I did like the bit Thank that you. I saw. But by, by the time this goes live, uh, that will have already been out. So, you know, there's no point in telling people it comes out Monday and then rushing off to YouTube. Oh, okay. But, so it came out four weeks ago. <laughs> 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 so, so you... So you'll do seven episodes and, and, and that's it? You'll, you'll, you won't continue? Or do you, you wait f- for a second season? Or what, what's, what's the plan? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, um, we're doing kind of the pre-planning for the second season. And we really haven't done a lot on that because I'm focusing, just getting, banging out this first season. Um, but there would definitely, definitely be a second season. And I would love to speak to you guys and other life coaches about experiences to potentially be included. Do you guys have any particularly memorable, disclosable life coaching uh, events? He, he knows I have. I, I've got some brilliant ones. <laughs> Probably the funniest one is uh, I've been talking to a client about, um, we were talking about, I can't remember exactly now, it was about three or four years ago, about diet. It was when the whole paleo, paleo movement was kicking off. And I'd done a lot of research into it. And I really found it quite fascinating. And uh, I sent her an email saying um, one of the things on paleo is, is doing it, 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 intermittent fasting. So that what you do is you may go a day or even just half a day without eating any food at all because the, the theory is that that's how you know, prehistoric man lived. They would go periods of time without eating and then they would eat and whatever. So I sent her an email and I can't remember in answer to what saying as she considered intermittent fisting. <laughs> I miss the entire thing, man. I miss, I miss that. Anyway. No, I meant to say intermittent fasting, and I said, as you consider the intermittent fisting. Fisting. Oh, God. Fisting, yes. Oh, I killed, the, I, I killed the moment. She didn't respond, and after I'd done it, because I sort of immediately knew what I'd done, I thought, fuck, do I, do I follow up email saying I meant to say fasting, not fisting, <laughs> or do I just pretend like nothing happened? And I pretended like nothing happened. She never said anything. And uh, so, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was, oh. that was, but, and I've got others as well. I won't, I won't bore you with them now. Like, that, that's, that's brilliant, my friend. That's brilliant. That's a brilliant I've, story. I've, 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 several, several times, I have a habit. Whenever I send a text to my wife, I always put a kiss on the bottom. Uh, three, three different occasions, I've sent texts to clients and put a kiss on the bottom. And the first time I did it was to a, <laughs> oh, to, to a guy, uh, to a guy who actually was called Guy. Back, he was a client back in the UK, <laughs> and he texted me back saying, "Was that really meant for me?" And I said, "I texted him back, said, of course it was.' Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but I can, um, I can also do some digging around with the other coaches and ask for them, for them, for them, but them, but, but uh, again, but it's a thing. So. You know, with a, with your industry, Monica, when you're acting, yeah. if you fuck up on stage, you just keep going, and ninety nine percent of the time, the audience don't know. Unless it's something major like you fall off stage and break your <laughs> neck, you know, it's like trying to hold your head straight back. You yeah. know, um, they won't they won't know because they don't know what. They, but in this industry, people seem so averse to fucking up. You know, I, I did it. I did it yesterday. I was due to speak to a call. I'd screwed up time zones. I mean, it's only a minor thing, but I'm sat there at five o'clock thinking, Where, "Where's my client?" Mm-hmm. And she's in uh, Houston, so in uh, Mountain Time or whatever. And anyway, you know, so we we do it. And you know, I can. I, I've written an entire post once, but I just think with this, it's, I, I mean, do you think that's because you're exposing yourself? You're, you're in public all the time, and it's just a fact of life, or, or whatever. What, what do you think about that? I don't even know if there's a question in there, but see if you can find a question in there and, and get back to me. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I guess I feel like... I, yeah, I, do, I don't know. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> that was, nice. yeah, that, that was productive. I, I know we said it's raw voices and it wasn't. <laughs> but what do, you, what do you think, Olivia? Do you think that's a thing that life coaches feel like they can't fuck up? Now, I've had a lot of coaches no. say to me, you know, I've got to have my life in place before I can do it. And no, uh, it doesn't work so like that, does it? My experience with all the, the other coaches is they set the bar too high and they see themselves as saviors. You know, they really want to help. Yeah. They really want to help. So when they are with a client, 
uh, it's uh, well this is the feedback that, that I have from them is, is I want really to do something magical and when I say something magical is to have this break you know this haha moment from the client you know so you do try you know all these questions that you have you, you try different processes different tools just to get to this and, and sometimes it's, it's too much effort you know you raise too much the bar high 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 I want to get this re immediate result but you know when you try too hard when you try too hard you might have the opposite effect and really the more simple you are you know and coaching is really about being with a client most of the time being with a client and, and be curious right being curious and that's what i see from mm -hmm. from me mm -hmm. uh, and i have, by the way I'm, I'm i'm there i'm also a uh, kind of a beginner you know tim is an old timer as you can see he's much more older than me i don't know if you see that <laughs> <laughs> so but but I have also this, this, this issue to, to oh, I need to, 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 to nail this on, you know, and, and mm -hmm. it, it goes back to this perfection, you know, to this, to this issue of I'm not good enough and I don't want to be perfect and all this kind of shit. But uh, well, that's, that, that happens. But. That's the same thing with acting. That's, you just literally described what acting is. It's just being with another person and being simple and being just in the moment. But, but you know that's what? That's exactly the same thing. You know one thing because I've heard that coaching is also uh, used as a as a as a uh, as a method for acting as well. By the way, uh, all the tools and I have some uh, uh, an acting an actor who is a coach, very well known coach, uh, Troy. Uh, I don't remember his last name, but he's an actor originally, and he told me that Troy and the Mistrons. Sorry, <laughs> Troy and the Mistrons. Troy, 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 Troy. <laughs> keep, keep. Join the restaurants. Keep talking. Sorry, sorry. I, I will just, I just need to, to look. Yeah, uh, is a uh, Troy York. Troy York, and uh, he's a very, very well-known co uh, coach in Europe. And uh, he's, he's an actor. And he said everything that I've learned in acting served me as a coach as well. So it's it's I don't know. It's it's something maybe. What's up? I, I don't know that. What's that mean? Who? No, not you. Me? No. What does it mean? No. I, no. Anybody? I don't know what. I don't understand what you mean. How, how does coaching? How, how would acting? I have no clue. I, I'm not an actor, my friend. I'm not an actor. So, but this is what his feedback. Well, what did he say? I, what did he say? What were the skills, Monica? What do you my, think the skills were? Yeah. Well, my acting training because I did four years of undergraduate acting training, which is a comedy web series in and of itself, um, and it has made me. I have gotten. 98% of the jobs that I have interviewed for, I believe because of my acting training. It makes you personable. Mm -hmm. You're able to go mm -hmm. into a room and be present and speak to people. And it's, I mean, honestly, all of the acting skills I learned are very transferable to other things. I used to teach yoga also, and it's all about using your voice and your body. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I could see Absolutely. how coaching. I mean, I I don't know what coaches do specifically. I suppose, which I should probably know if I'm writing websites. Okay, about Monica. It. Okay, um, <laughs> this is yeah. it, Monica. You're an actor, and you will take uh, an ICF accreditation because this is a real thing, not Tim's certification, but an ICF accreditation. <laughs> yeah, fuck off. <laughs> ICF accreditation, and you will tell us. You will tell us what acting is, acting and coaching brings. Okay, can we do that as a mission for you? Great. Yeah. It's, it's only six grand. How do, how do I sign out? How do I sign up? <laughs> I will. I will give you yeah. everything. By the way, I'm taking fifty percent on that because I am referring. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it's interesting you say about the uh, the job interviews. I can see that. I can definitely see that because mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, there's, there's a certain there's a certain skill to go into an interview. It's a little bit like taking an exam. You don't necessarily need to be the best person for the job. You just need to be good at interviewing. But I was. I actually guilty guilty pleasure here. I actually love Celebrity Apprentice, <laughs> and it is a terrible show. Donald Trump is the biggest narcissist, other than me, on the planet. <laughs> and uh, though it, it, it is just this sort of odious character. There was a great thing on election night when Obama got elected, he, re-elected. He tweeted, uh, "America's." Uh, the, the world is laughing at America. We should march on Washington, D.C. <laughs> and do, demand a re-election. And somebody <laughs> do, tweeted back to him that I was following, no, Donald, the world's laughing at you. <laughs> Which is, but, but this, th there was, this, there was this, this actress, I don't know who she was, it's on the series at the moment, in the first, she was, she was like crying. 
and and but she, it looked to me so fake. And Donald saying, "Oh, she really is upset. She's really." And I'm screaming at the TV. She's a fucking actor, <laughs> you moron. Do you not think she can do upset if she couldn't do that? And he was completely convinced she's genuinely upset, isn't she? You know, she was dabbing these fake fucking tears. It was like it was almost like a, a mockumentary. You know, if it wasn't for the fact that you knew he, he would never ever. You know, do something like that and, and knock his own credibility. So, uh, so yeah, I've shot off as just another tangent that we didn't really want to go down, haven't I? Really? No. So, um, so I wanted I've to never seen the show. I should it. tune in. <laughs> yeah, you should because um, this season they've got Aroldo on, and Aroldo has got the biggest ego of anybody I've ever seen on Celebrity Apprentice. <laughs> it's uh, incredible. They had to do this big poster for this this one one show they were doing and he had two pictures of himself on I mean that's you know that's was quite impressive you should watch it's great it's like a it's people watching it's seeing people just it's just so funny it's, it's not meant to be a comedy but it really is in my opinion but anyway anyway it's never watched Celebrity Apprentice no I've, 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 I've just seen there. some some <laughs> short uh, short things about, about this show but uh, I also dislike very much Donald Trump for um, uh, for the same reason that you described, he has this big, big ego, you know. And um, he actually, uh, in Dubai, just invested, I don't know how many billions, to develop another uh, resort kind of things uh, in the middle of the desert. And it will be the biggest golf club in the middle of the desert. So just in terms of sustainability and natural resources, the guy just doesn't mm-hmm. give a fuck. It's just, it just, yeah. just, I want my fucking money. This is what, what matters very much. Mm. So this kind of attitude is, is, uh, is to me, I don't, I don't understand this guy. But anyway, that's... It's psychopathic. I mean, in, in the genuine, you know, the, there's been a lot of studies done on, on people that have got to the level that he has. And, you know, there's a, there's a very, very high number of psychopathic uh, personality disorders in, in terms of the true sense not the Hollywood is axing people but in the true sense that they're wired up not to give a shit you know true psychopath just doesn't give a fuck about what anybody else thinks of them and I think that's what, what Trump is he really he, he, there's nothing we, he could hear about him that would knock it dent his confidence or his ego should we invite just, him you know. should we invite him actually yeah I'm pretty sure it'll be no. a doddle to get him on. <laughs> I, I, yeah, he'll, he'll accept. Well, how, could he, how could he turn this perfect? And we, we, with Olivier, say, send, it, send him instructions on how to record his own voice. I can see him going for that. For, any, for anybody listening, I don't, this is, Olivier sends instructions out to all the, uh, the guests we have on to record their own voice because we haven't got competent equipment <laughs> to do it for them. You know, so. It, w- it I, wasn't hard. Ask Monica a question? Sorry, I beg your pardon, Monica. No, no, I just said it wasn't hard, which I did right before the podcast when Olivier sent me that email. (laughs) See? Perfect. See? (laughs) Perfect. It'll just be down to me now to fuck up Gary's like in the last one, so we haven't got a recording. Uh, um, Monica, tell me, three three comedy heroes. Oh, um, Catherine O'Hara. Do you know who she is? Mm. I know the name, but I, to be honest, I'm not familiar with the work. Have you ever seen the classic film Home Alone? Yes. She's the mom. <laughs> okay. I love okay. her. Um, Amy Poehler, obviously. Okay. Um, yeah. Parks and Rex is like kind of what I modeled my show after. Um, right. And then, oh God, I don't know. Obviously, Tina Fey is fabulous. Mm. Um. Who, who yeah. sorry? Tina, Tina Fey. Yeah. Oh, Tina Fey. Tina Fey. There's a bit of a female bias going on here now. <laughs> I guess, I guess She's... that's true. Do I like any yeah, male No, not really. I, 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 think, I think it's interesting you say that because until re- relatively recently, um, there really weren't many female iconic comedians. It was pretty much... The, you, you know now I think there's some really good uh, female. I also like totally, um, Maria Bamford. Yeah. But, uh, um, and, no, it's um, actually a really big problem here. Like in New York, all the comedy schools. There's two big comedy schools, and I took classes right. at one of them, and it is completely male-dominated, male-oriented. Mm. Mm. Oh, I won't say all of the teachers are men, but a lot of them are. And I hate to say like men and women have different kinds of humor because that's not totally true, obviously. Um, but it's interesting. I, I do feel like it's an issue. 
Mm. So yeah. yeah, I like women comedians. Oh, and Lucille Ball, obviously, she's fabulous. She I you know first. when when Joan Rivers was di- dying or when she was in the hospital, mm-hmm. um, I, I tweeted that um, they've just upgraded her from critical to stable or something, and I and I tweeted. I bet she'll be livid that she wasn't up- upgraded to business class at least. <laughs> and t- two girls came by. I don't even know who they were. They don't know who followed me and said that you know you've got no you know there's a woman who, whose life's in danger or whatever. And I tweeted back, "Have you ever seen her fucking yeah. set? She was brutal. <laughs> she was ripping oh, 9/11 yeah. about getting about getting um, ash on a fur coat after 9/11." <laughs> And, and oh my ripping God. AIDS, you, you know, she's the most. I can remember hearing Jim Norton say that that he thought she was the most brutal comic That's ever. True. And, and I've 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 seen a live set, and, and, and I'd agree. And they and they both came back and said no. They just knew her from the Fashion Police, oh. which is this lovely older woman, look, you know, just talking on fashion and, and being very snarky and that. I mean, she was genius, but. God, she was a bitter, angry woman in a lot of respects. I think. Actually, that brings yeah. me que- that, that brings me question for you, Monica. Is there some some limits that you wouldn't go? You know, in this show. You know, is there like you know, is it? Would you go to swearing and and you know, all crazy, or you just yeah. put put yourself some? No, I yeah. don't know. I feel like well, I mean, yeah, I would swear. Obviously, um, they're swearing in my web series. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I think, for me, I don't particularly love Joan Rivers' brand of comedy. I think it's mm. just trying a little too hard. Um, mm. I guess my brand is I, I'm just I'm just kind of goofy. That's where I go. <laughs> goofy slapstick. Yeah. Mm. I wouldn't mm. do like you know there are definitely limits. I wouldn't do nudity and Did things you- like that. Unless you paid me a lot of money, and I don't think anyone really wants that. Shit! Idea. You just told me before, yeah. just at the beginning, that you that you, you were showing your ass to me or something like that. No, and now you, you tell me that you yeah, well, but yeah, you but can't see it. Being, yeah, it's not being beam live to YouTube, you muppet, is it? You know, so <laughs> it's not quite the same thing at all. So I, I think I think you could definitely take the character. Of, it could be like Breaking Bad, though, as the characters just get darker and darker as the series oh, moves yeah. on till in the end, she's just, just this, like, this evil, yeah. power-crazy bitch. And, but she's got to the level of Tony Robbins or whatever, and she's just <laughs> like this power-hungry fucking lunatic you know, that wants to... By the way, yeah, that, that, that's a good world. thing, actually, Monica. You should, you should invite Tony Robbins you know, to your show. That would be... a seriously that would be good, awesome that would be a cool stuff okay first thing team team is good but Tony Robbins is even higher than that, you know <laughs> he's taller than me I mean, <laughs> he's 6 foot 7 for fuck's sake so I'm only 5'10 so we've got that over me straight I have an that. idea why yeah, don't hey. we have like kind of fight between you and Tony Robbins you know you know, you just you, you say I'm better than you well, and stuff and then he punch, punch you in the face what do you think for real <laughs> I, I think you shouldn't be writing comedy. I think, yeah. I'm just, <laughs> that's what I think. You know, I don't think I'm not sure about anything else. Yeah, it fucking crushed my skull. The guy's a monster. My, my a, wife actually thinks he's got gigantism <laughs> and a disease where it's just, I don't know if that's true. I think that would go viral. <laughs> yeah, it would go viral, wouldn't it, actually? Yeah, yeah. if you got this. I, I think any time when you bring somebody in and you just drop them... I, I love it when people have got this persona, and I'll tell you who's done this really well, and I'm sorry, Olivia, you won't know who the fuck I'm talking about. In fact, Monica might not, but Peyton Manning. Um, do you know what I mean, Monica? Yeah. Yeah, the course oh, oh. of that for the Denver Broncos. Yeah, but he's got this very, very serious, you know, he just never smiles on the field, ne- very stern, very, you know, he's probably one of the, possibly the greatest quarterback to have ever played the game. But he'd done these TV ads where they really like, where he's in this hotel, his hotel in his, his dressing gown. It's just, I can't remember what happens now, but it's really funny. But when he, when he puts something in a situation like that, so if you put Tony Robbins in, it's like, it's dead serious. And then he comes out with something like, well, fuck you, motherfucker. I mean, that would just be awesome, wouldn't it? That's the kind of thing that I just, I just love that. I'd be like, sorry, Tony. You know, if he says to me, stop fucking swearing. You're making us all look like a bunch of twats. <laughs> Oh, by the way, can I just explain? The word twat in English is 
It's totally different. I've done this before. I'm t- <laughs> yeah, you've is. done it. In, in America, in America, it's gender specific, and in England, it's much more of a it's much more of a, a less severe word. You know, sorry, I shouldn't because anyway. <laughs> so, so Olivier is a bit of a twat, you know. So anyway, I, um, we don't say twat. Yeah, Mo- Monica, Ooh. Monica, if if okay, if you yes. have this biggest success, so what what's what's the dream there? What what will happen? That's a coaching question, by the way. Well. I have realistic goals and then I also have dream goals. Like, obviously, I would love to have my own TV show, like, on NBC. That would be awesome. Um, <clears throat> but realistically, right now, I would love to find someone to help produce a second season and mm. help fund that. Hint, 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 hint. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. I'm yeah. struggling to pay off my trip back to the UK. Anyone yeah. out there with money? <laughs> um... And yeah, I really, uh, yeah, it's mostly producing goals right now and, uh, yeah, funding. I think for I'm fun- realistic, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I've, been, I've been jaded over the years, so. <laughs> okay. I think funding will be hard for us because we're extremely poor uh, as well as idiots, but I think we can help by being on the show. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, w- I, well, no, would- I like the way she said, any- hint, hint, anyone out there. And I'm like... <laughs> We're not sure there is anyone out there, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> well, if Donald Trump tunes in, we're in business here. <laughs> yeah, okay. we're in business in a legal suit. But, uh, but, <laughs> but I think you, know, you, yeah. need to, you need to do some nudity, I think, Monica. So I'm sorry to say that. Or some what? Nudity. Oh, humility. No, yeah. nudity. No. Nudity. No, oh, nudity. Maybe. Just quit with that. You, you can't leave it alone, can you? No, I can't. You're just, you're just <laughs> obsessed with this topic I'm now. French. I'm, <laughs> from, I'm French. Je suis oh, français. Of course. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I need a mistress. I, 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 do for, I do forget. <laughs> okay, I'll be your mistress, but just couldn't, couldn't you've asked me off air for crying out loud. It's not really necessary. Um, I, but I, I, when you said, you know, my realistic aim, uh, straight away, if I'd have been coaching you, I'd have been, I'd have been, whoa, 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 hang on a minute, hang on, realistic. Because, you know, everything, if you look around where you are now, everything around you at one point in time was unrealistic. It, you know, there are people who've taken, you know, gone from where you are now and, and sh- you know, I know that the, the, the old cliche about being an overnight success and working for 10 years or whatever, but there are people that have just burst onto the scene that have been discovered and, and you know, so I, I think, I'm not saying it's dangerous to think that it's unrealistic, but but I think, I'd, I'd say it's going to be tough, it's going to, it's definitely it's tough to, to get a TV series but I don't think it's unrealistic because you're almost saying like it really couldn't happen by saying it's unrealistic and it, and it, and it could. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. You're a okay. good life coach. <laughs> I'm not. I'd, I've, I've got some notes down in here, actually. I'm, I'm re, 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 reading off. I bought a book, The Dummy's Guide to Life Coaching, this morning. Um, but no, the reason why I say that, there's, there is a serious reason behind that. Because um, when we tell ourselves something's realistic, we're less likely to spot the opportunities than when we think something's definitely possible. Now, I'm not talking, I'm not talking this is woo-woo bullshit that I'm talking now. I don't deal in, in that, you know. Um, in fact, me and Olivier are trying to get one of some of the people off the secret onto the podcast just so we can ambush them and ridicule the law of attraction. Uh, we're not very we're not really nice. Um, but, you know, I, it's, like I say, you, you tend to see more possibilities because they I mean, the cliche, and this cliche has been done to death, I, I know, but if you, if you suddenly decide you want to buy you know, a yellow yellow Hummer, you're suddenly going to notice yellow Hummers on the streets that were there all the time, but you just not notice them because you're more tuned into that wavelength. I mean, that's, like I say, this is a cliche, you know, like the car example gets used a lot, but, it, but it's true. Are you tittering, Monica? Hmm? No, you, my fiancé is popping um, bubble wrap in the background. Hello. Popping bubble <laughs> Oh. Well, get to say hello. Don't be rude. Hi. You want to say hi? Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> hi. Okay. Hello. What's the, what's the name? <laughs> Michelle. 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 Hello, You're Michelle. Very welcome, yeah. Michelle. Yeah. Michelle. I was going to. Nah, no, I'm no, don't sing. Please don't sing. I sang yesterday. Oh, wait. I have, a, I have a funny French story for you. you. Go for it. Okay. So I came out to my boss <clears throat> at one point um, by saying, well, she noticed my engagement ring and she's like, oh, what is your fiance's name? And I said, oh, Michelle. And then she stopped for a moment and she said, is he French? 
<laughs> yeah. And then I said, no, she's a woman. <laughs> so. Oh, was that, was there an awkward silence? You know, actually, we were on the subway platform together, and I literally had to run onto the train. I was like, no, she's a woman. Bye! And I just, like, jumped <laughs> yeah. on the train. And she's just like, uh, what, what, I can imagine. <laughs> do, do you know something? She, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go yeah. on. No, I was like, she yelled after me, my brother's gay! <laughs> I was um, like, okay! Do Doors closed. Like, yeah. I'm not a racist, I've got a black friend. I, I actually have said a gay that on friend. the last podcast. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm not anti-Muslim. My brother-in-law's Muslim. You know, it just... Uh, I'm genuinely not. I actually, I'm a... One of the things I'm intolerant about is intolerance. And it's weird, you know, because I have had a disproportionately... I get a disproportionately amount of gay people, either, uh, either you know, from the, from the you know, the LGBT... Um, um, I was going to say industry then. <laughs> so, you know, you know what I mean. But I get a Everything is a business. <laughs> Yes, it is. It's all about the money. It's all about the pink dollar. Yeah. No, it, and, and I've never quite figured out why. I'm not sure if it's I'm a bit camp or that I've written on gay rights before a couple of times. And I can remember when they had the whole Clause 8, was it, in California that time and absolutely tore it to pieces. When yeah. The, the Cali- uh, so whether that's the reason or whether it's, or it's just a coincidence or there's just people like telling me they're gay. I've no idea. Oh, um I'm giving you an opening here, Olivia. If you want to come in and tell me you're gay, I understand that. Um, I, I, to, I, 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 you know, yesterday, if you listened to me, I said I, I was doing my coming out, you know, remember? But, but I yes. knew Guy McPherson, no, and I love this no, moustache. I, I, I moustache don't remember is... anything you said. <laughs> I don't remember anything you said at all. I was yeah, yeah, I know. My... I know. You're just interested so, uh, by yourself. Egocentric yes, maniac. Yeah. Anyway. Maniac, yes. What, what kind of moustache was it? It was a whole bushy mustache, white. Because oh, Tim is very jealous. He cannot, he, d- 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 Tim cannot grow a beard. He doesn't have like... I can't grow hair. I mean, hair. You, look, you can't see this. I don't know if Monica can see us. I presume she can't. But I, I've got the most hairless... But I'm like one of those cats. You know, the, I don't know what they call them. Those cats that's <laughs> got no hair. I've just... Apart from... I'm turning to my dad because apart from I found a hair in my ear a couple of months ago and that was quite That's frightening like, Shh. I know I know That's it was I, I know I know don't tell me about it um, I just I, I just oh god oh god next thing I know I'm going to have to be starting combing my eyebrows over you know so uh, anyway so Manika uh, t- 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 tell us about one of the, the dumbest advice that you gave on the show what was one of the the, the, the most ridiculous one that you gave um, well, actually, <clears throat> so in the next episode that I'm releasing on Monday, which will now be an old episode, um, <clears throat> my character has her client do what's called burrito therapy, where she transfers all of her negative energy to a burrito, and then she takes it on a walk, on a leash. <laughs> um, <laughs> which I got from a real thing. I read a news article about these kids in China. Uh, there are only children that are very depressed and lonely, and they started putting cabbages on leashes oh, and walking them around. Fuck. Real story, yeah. Walked them around, transferred all their negative energy to them, and then they'd rot, and then with them, their negativity and depression would rot, and then they'd throw it away. Oh, fuck. So... <laughs> I'm not depressed. So, I wonder who, I, when they came up with the idea. Can you imagine Tim and psychologist? So, so I, I suggest we put an avocado on it. No, no, that's ridiculous. It can't be an avocado. <laughs> well, well, how about a melon? Oh, fucking hell! You can get out of the room with melon. <laughs> what about a cabbage? Yes, yes, of course. Cabbage is good. The fucking cabbage. Yes, it's got. It's food, cheap. Just the right colour. Just the right size. Yeah, you can make some soup out of it afterwards. And. and yeah, that's, that's yeah. God bless those wacky Chinese. <laughs> I know. I'll, I'll not. I'll not. Olivia but, got quite concerned after the second podcast because he reckoned I'd, I'd, I'd denigrated pretty much every everyone population, every culture on the on the planet, including the British, because we're all a bunch of wankers. So you know, that's true. There is that. There is that as well. But so you I, define I, wankers for us? Wankers. Wankers is a great word because um, Americans don't get it at all. Uh, it's uh, a wanker. Is <laughs> it means? Um, what? Why are we going down this? Uh, to, to have a wank means, means okay. to, to, no, go to on, masturbate. Continue. But but 
but the thing is, it's like you see it in programs like The In Between Us, where they'll dub out words like shit, but they'll leave in bollocks and wanker, which in the UK are a lot worse words. Um, but I, I kind of find it, Americans find it quaint when I say bollocks or wanker, and I can use it yeah. quite, uh, quite, quite, um, quite uh, liberally. <laughs> not, not, not. What does bollocks words. mean? Bollocks. There, bollocks you like, oh, shucks. Balls. You must have heard that. You must have heard of the probably the, the the one of the most famous rock and roll albums of all time. Never mind the bollocks by the Sex Pistols. Mm-hmm. It's great. Cause I went to South Carolina one time. I can't remember what the fuck I was doing in South Carolina. But I was there and I was in. I was talking to this this girl and we, she, she was like, "When you get into the sticks of America, and they hear your accent, they want to know." You do, oh, I swear to God, somebody wants honest. I, I've had two things. Once somebody asked me if I'd ever met the Queen. I'm like, "Yeah," because it's like <laughs> fucking sixty million British people it's like asking me, "Asking you, have you ever met Obama?" You know, and. Um, so what was the other one that somebody asked me? Um, oh, yeah, I've got... Seriously, this has happened to me. I've got a friend called John from London. Do you know him? <laughs> oh, John from London. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's only like the fucking fourth or fifth biggest city in the world. I'm bound... How could I not know John from London? Yeah. Yeah, we're good buddies. Um, but I was anyway... I get so that a lot like, with actors. Really? Oh, yeah. People Do you are like, know? oh, my friend Sally's an actor. Do you know her? I'm like, mm. No. <laughs> Sally, Sally, yeah, yeah. Um, but this one, this is anyway. She came up to me and said, "Oh, she said, have you heard the album by the Six Sex Pistols called Never Mind the Bollocks?'" <laughs> and I just thought that was hilarious. So I said, "No, well, it's never mind the bollocks." But never mind, never mind. So, who's yeah, the most mind. famous person you know apart from Tucker Max and, and me? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> who's the most firm, famous person you know? Most famous person. Yeah. I don't know yeah. anybody famous. I wish. Rich? Do I know anybody famous? Thomas Matthews. Oh, yeah. My friend Thomas Matthews is a little bit famous. Thomas Matthews. He was on the... Yeah, his dad is Chris Matthews of Hardball. Oh, right. Yeah, and, Chris Matthews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he was on the show The Newsroom. Maggie oh, okay. He's a little bit famous. And also, Maggie Gyllenhaal has been stalking me a lot lately. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Have you seen An Honorable Woman? No. You have got to see it. It's probably the best TV series I have ever seen. Maggie Gyllenhaal plays a, an English really? woman. Her accent is fucking incredible. I have never, wow. I have never seen an American do a British accent and nail it. Like she's just amazing. It's like an eight-part series. We're already at about number four, at the, which we got uh, Olivier's got his head in his hands again. Like, I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She was just incredible. It's, it's really, really complex. And anyway, I'll shut up now. But she's yeah, stalking you, you. Is she? Is she? Yep. Is she gay? She's stalking me. Oh yeah, yeah. No, she lives in my she lives in my neighborhood. So I see her at coffee shops. I've ridden the subway with her. I, you know, I see her like probably at least once a week. <laughs> well, fuck. You know, somebody famous. Yeah. Why, why do you say that to begin with? Well, you've got. How come we've not watched the Honorable Woman? Here? And I, uh, it- I was a I was a nanny for a long time, and the kid that I nannied goes to school with some famous people. So I guess I know them. It's all coming out. Right? Now. Uh, you know, oh, yeah, you know I what they got. I forgot. I forgot that I've got dinner this afternoon with the Dalai Lama. You know, but other than that, it's uh, yeah. If you, go, go, uh, get, uh, have you got? Have you got? Shut up, Olivia. Have you got Netflix? No, yes. I don't. Got, I don't. Got, no, no, I'm not talking to you. I told you to shut up. Just behave Who? yourself. It's all about you. I, f- I feel. You know what I feel? I feel like you. you, you I feel that you're having a, a, a casting interview right now. You know, it's just like this. You know, you just, you just, you just behaving just like an actor. What do you think, Monica, with the acting skill? Would you, would you, would you? This is me. This is me. No, I know, but you, you, are, is, you have a whole package. You know, you can, you can do, you can do sad. Thank you very much. Happy. Thank you very much, mate. I you do can, have you a can, package. You have a big package. You can be hairless as well. So, no, what do you think, really. Monica? No, you, you, yeah, you are. Do I think Tim could be an actor? Yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> well, you seem say. very charismatic. <laughs> Is well, it? she's going to say, "Don't be fucking stupid, <laughs> 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 you idiot Frenchman." It's something lost in translation here. Because re- remember, he's got to translate everything I say into back into French in his head. No, it um, doesn't it, work it, like that. Oh, no. Now you've made. Oh, I have English. a fun fact. Slap Do you thumb? guys know since yes. you're French and you're European? Uh, do you know the series um, 
of L'Auberge Espagnole, that movie. L'Auberge Espagnole. Do you know that movie? Yes. No. no. Yeah, uh, well... Then never mind. I've, so, <laughs> it, it, it was supposed I to be funny, fun Monica. <laughs> that, that was a fun fact. Have you got any more fun facts, Monica? It was because fabulous. I, I, I well, want I'm more in fun the... facts. What's your fun fact? Sorry? We've lost What's it. your fun fact? <laughs> edit, 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 edit. No, I know I did. I think I it's no missing. I, I, always, I keep forgetting we don't edit. That's why it's called Raw We Voices. don't edit. We don't edit. Oh, we don't edit. I know, I'm we sorry. Keep, we keep I'm everyone, sorry. but I can tell you something for sure. Right now, at this moment, we are at, at 50, 50, how much? 50, how much? 55, 55 minutes. Mi- 55 minutes. We call I can tell you there's no one listening at this point. So we can say whatever we want. I think. Okay, can, can, I ask, can I ask Monica this? Monica, did you ever like yes. or did you even know uh, Greg Giraldo? You just cut out what? Uh, did you like uh, Greg Giraldo, the comedian who died about three I years ago? <gasps> I don't know who that is. He's my all-time favourite comedian. He just, oh no, and he died. He was, it's the only time a celebrity's died where I was almost in tears. Oh, honestly, when Princess oh. Diana, Princess Diana's funeral, I went walking my dog when the funeral was on. I just never saw another person. Everybody <laughs> in the country was watching that and, and blubbing over. Oh. Over, uh, not that she wasn't a nice person, she was, you know, but I didn't know her really, you know, it's just like. But, tr- but, tr- but for Robbie Williams, you were touched in your heart. Yeah, because Robin, Robin Williams. Robin I, Williams was one of my favorite male comedians. I just, I, I had a friend meet him in uh, San Francisco and he, he just stopped, and he, my friend's like six foot nine, seriously, and he just, Robin Williams did this whole routine bit with him and his, his friend for like. 10 minutes or, and then just said, shook his hand and walked on his way he said you couldn't he's just exactly like you thought yeah, and I heard I had the comedy channel on Sirius you know that day and ev- all these people coming on everybody was saying that is exactly what he was like you know there was no pretense well there was obviously the pretense about it. but did, don't you think Monica that his eyes always look sad yeah I mean yeah that- he was by he was bipolar, right? And uh, was he? I don't know if he was bipolar. I know he suffered from serious depression. I don't know if it was bipolar or not. Maybe it was. He's probably right. But uh, I think that he was. It's a shame. You I, know, yeah. It, no. If, to, to me, it's like you know, because I'm a big George Carlin fan as well. I really used to like Mitch Hedberg, who died with drug overdose. It's like always the decent comics that seem to die young. I mean, why didn't you know any fucker take carrot top or something? You know, I mean, if you go, you know, why is it the go- why, do you think? Do you think there's truth in the being on the edge of genius and the edge of madness at the same time? Definitely. Good. <laughs> ah. So, so you? do you want to do you want to die you young? That's it. <laughs> no, uh, definitely not. Okay. I thought he was talking definitely to me. Then I'm like, how the fuck am I going to do that? I'm going to need a TARDIS, a time machine, if I want to die young. <laughs> I'm going to go back twenty years. Not, not for you, man. You're not the yeah. genius. Come on, man. Oh, no. That's true. <laughs> true. So I didn't, I didn't tick any of the boxes, really, then, did I? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So I think, anyway. Uh, I think we are uh, at the hour. Oh, no. Sure. Uh, Monica, so what, I- what would be the, the, your last word just to, to give this, this appeal and desire to everyone to, to watch this web series. Oh my God, that's a lot of pressure. Come on. Um, I, I know, I know that's why we're doing it. We never said exactly. it was going to be fucking um, easy, did we? Jesus Christ. <laughs> come on. Come on with the answer right now. Now. You're an actor. Um, my tag, I'll say my tagline. Um, well, just tune in to find the meaning of life coaching. So. There that's you it. go. That's all I got. <laughs> cool. Tune in, feel the light, and and it gets it gets a thumbs up from me, two thumbs up. Oh, thank we'll, you. we'll have to see you on Monday if I give it a second. If you get a second thumb up, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would love to know what you think. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, you, you, I'll tell you. I'll be honest. So, um, cool. what did you think to it, Olivier? <laughs> Which one? The first, the first one. Yeah. One. Yeah. Oh. Bloody hell! I, th- I didn't think he'd watched it. I was trying to embarrass him. Then I think no, I, I think I'm st- I did it. I, w- okay. I, wa- I watched him with uh, with my wife actually, and it was short enough. Oh. And, no, that's true. And and I love your acting. 
it, it reminds me actually of Tina Fey, uh, the, your, your, your acting, the way that you, that you play this, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this life coach. No, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Yeah, well, I think I think you can really develop. The well, you obviously, are, I can feel like I'm giving you, uh, giving you, telling you what to do now. Sorry, uh, that was really fucking <laughs> narcissistic. No. What? Do you want to be the producer, yeah. man? She, she, no, she, no, I love your idea of making her really dark later on. I think the second season's going to get a little darker. Good, I that's like cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. We have a murder. <laughs> yeah, murder. Oh. Yeah, murder bodies. <laughs> yeah, she, she starts killing she everybody. The, the life coach to the <laughs> life coach to the mob. <laughs> You know, you got like, you know, just like a play on the Sopranos, which I've never seen, but I believe it's. Like, <laughs> I don't know, fucking, I'm talking about. You're just full of good ideas. Mm, mm. Cool. Okay. Well, listen, okay, Monica, guys. Uh, from me, thank you very much for coming on. You've been good fun. Uh, anybody that puts thank up with you me, guys. Um, Olivia always tells me that I've talked too much, and I, and I definitely have talked too much today. I have. Uh, I think but, you that, but, that, but, but that's why people tune in. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very oh good my joke God. I, yeah that's, I know yeah. Right, so you'll like this fact, thank you Monica and we will continue to uh, yeah. to pimp your show and I look forward to uh, to seeing it take off and 1400 is good but we want we want we want to get that we want to get it over the million mark really that's why you, you know you've done something. yeah million, that would be fucking that would be awesome views on million, million. You, Oh, I said over. So I, I didn't. I didn't put a finite number on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's a mathematical <laughs> equation, mate. It could be any number between a million and infinity to the stars. To infinity. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'm stopping the recording right now. All right. Cheers, au revoir. Cheers. <laughs> bye. All right. Bye.